The Final Four is finally here, and all eyes of the basketball world will be focused on Phoenix, Arizona this weekend. And our guy, our celebrity handicapper, is obviously back on Handicap Hustle because he's going to tell you which games to, which teams to pick in these in the semifinal round. Welcome everyone to Handicap Hustle. I am your host Todd Schoenberger. I am joined by my friend and celebrity. I mean, prognosticator, whatever you want to title you want to give him, but his name is Richard Frazier. Richard, welcome back to Handicap Hustle. Thank you, Todd. Glad to be here. Absolutely. Well, you are the star of the show. Two weeks in a row, you've made 60% of your bets correct. Correctly picked 60% of the games. I mean, more than half. The the average is well below 50%, and you're a star. You're rocking it right now. And now, obviously, everybody who is has an interest in sports gambling is focused on you. So, Richard, tell us, going into the Final Four, we already know the four teams, UConn, Alabama, NC State, which is my favorite right now, and then you have Purdue that are all in this, and you definitely have some first-timers as well. But were there any big surprises of those four teams? I mean, obviously, NC State, I would think, would be a surprise for you. But what do you think? Tell the audience your analysis of the past weekend. Well, obviously, uh, with uh, UConn and Purdue being in the tournament, they were number one seeds. They were expected to be in the final four, and they're here. Uh, with regards to the, the other two teams, Alabama and then NC State, Alabama, yeah, they had a shot at a four seed and, and NC State as an 11 seed. That's that's quite a surprise. Uh, we could delve a little deeper into the resumes of these teams if you have some time. Oh, you know, I do. And I got to say, first of all, Alabama, NC State, big surprises, obviously. I mean, you have a team with the Wolfpack. Nobody even expected this. This is 1983 all over again. You could even say it's 1974 all over again. I mean, back then you had to win the, the your conference tournament just to make it into the NCAAs. NC State had to do it in 74. They obviously had to do it in 83, and they did it again in 24. So that's definitely the fan favorite right now. And obviously Alabama coming out of the SEC they are a football school. I got to say, I I picked UNC all the way over Alabama. You said Alabama over Carolina. You had it right. I had it wrong. But that's why you're the expert. But I, what do you think, though? The four teams, give the analysis, because I know you really dig deep, really look into these games when you're making your picks. I mean, UConn's obviously the favorite, but tell the audience, what you're thinking for the four teams. Okay, well, let, let's talk about the, the team you mentioned the most here, NC State. Now, the, the fact is, NC State went 9-11 and 11 in conference play. I mean, the only reason they're in this tournament is because they won the conference tournament. That's um, true. You, you have to they give were 17 and 14 overall. 17 and 14 overall does not make the NCAA tournament. And now they're 26 and 14 overall. So yeah, they had to win it. You're right. Why are they here though? I mean, how it didn't just happen. I mean, what's your well, thought as far as the process of what they had to go through to get to this point to reach Final Four weekend? Yeah, I mean, the the first game of the tournament, they played uh Texas Tech, which was a number six seed. That was a that was a good win for them. Now they they caught a break in the second round because they went up against 14 seed Oakland who had pulled off an upset. So that made it a little easier for them to get into the sweet 16, but things did not get easy for them in the sweet 16, having to face number two Marquette and then number four Duke. So they had their work cut out for them. So you have to give them credit for winning those games. Yeah. Well, you know what it is though? It's defense. If you take a look at Duke and Marquette, they held both teams to a combined 18% shooting from the perimeter. Really remarkable defense. And then obviously you got the big guy. You got Burns underneath. Six foot nine of them, but I think he's six foot nine wide. I mean, this guy is unstoppable and he can shoot as well. And what a fan favorite. The guy's having so much fun. He's laughing, he's cheering, he's smiling. That's what you want to see from a college athlete. 
he epitomizes the actual what we as Americans look for in collegiate athletics, and he is giving it to us right now. So NC State, definitely the fan favorite. Everybody is pulling, trying to really, you know, bring in their their inner Jim Valvano to really push this team forward past Purdue. Now let's talk about Purdue because they got the big guy, seven foot four. <laughs> what I mean, this guy's unbelievable. He's a big dude. He is going far, obviously, in the NBA draft. But what do you think? I mean, does NC State even have a chance against Purdue? Well, that's that's a good question, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But let, let's let's just look at this Purdue team. Yes, Edney is their leader. Uh, they they went seventeen and three in conference play. Uh, they they did get upset uh, by Wisconsin in the Big Ten semifinals. Uh, granted, it was an overtime game, but they they got to the uh, the final four similar to the way UConn did, where they did it the old fashioned way. They beat a sixteen seed Grambling, an eight seed Utah State, a five seed Gonzaga, and a two seed Tennessee. So. They, they earned their way here. They probably had a little bit of a tougher road than the UConn, who had to beat a 16 seed Stetson, nine seed Northwestern, six seed San Diego State, and a three seed Illinois. But yeah, I mean, when you when you break this all down, it certainly looks like we have two mismatches on paper. Uh, well, it does seem that way on paper, but. To be fair, you can actually say that about Duke and NC State as well, where on paper, you would think Duke would win the game. I mean, easily against State. Plus, in conference play, especially in the ACC, which is a you know obviously a rock star conference when it comes to college basketball, to beat a team twice real, and you are at this level is remarkably difficult. NC State did it against Duke. Now you're going against Purdue. You would think, yeah, Purdue is the favorite to make it the championship Monday. However, you just never know in this tournament, and um, and we've seen that already. So, um, so we'll see what the Boilermakers can pull off. I like the Boilermaker story. I think it's great, but they have so much focus on seven foot four Eddie or Edie, is it? So, so you have when you have that type of of commitment to one player. Yeah, sure as hell better make sure he stays on the court and he's productive. So we'll see how. how yeah, that exactly. And uh, like I said, uh, you know, P Purdue certainly earned their way to this spot. UConn is literally just steamrolled everybody since last season. I mean, uh, they're the defending champs. They went 18, 18 and two in conference play this year. Uh, rolled through their conference tourney, and uh, they they literally look unstoppable right now. Now, uh, if we could address Alabama, yeah, I mean a number four seed, kind of a kind of a surprise that they're in here, but they they had a good uh, regular season in the SEC, going thirteen and five. Now they did get knocked out in the first round of the conference tournament. But they had a pretty easy ride into the Sweet 16, beating number four, 13, uh, College of Charleston, then number 12, Grand Canyon University. Now, to get to the Final Four, of course, they had to beat UNC, which they did by two points, and then they had to beat Clemson, the number six seed, to get there. Yeah, yeah, and, and you're right. And the thing about with Alabama – they can score and they have scored as many as 109 and as little as 72. Uh, so that's the thing. And I brought this up last week when they were playing Carolina. They're great at offense, really weak on defense, but it doesn't matter for a team that's going to be able to, to really just shoot from the perimeter, nonstop blindfolded almost and shoot an NBA three. So Alabama can shoot the ball. That's definitely, I think, a a reaction of having Nate o Oates um, as your head coach. He was at the University of Buffalo. He had great success there because he really focused on offense, not so much on the defensive side. And in Alabama, he's doing just that. If the team is hot, 
they're gonna they're unstoppable. So it's gonna be really interesting. But on the defensive side, it's gonna be a tough, tough game against UConn. But let's talk about UConn. Really, I want to finish up this block. Obviously, UConn, the clear favorite. They went on a 30-0 run, Richard, in the Elite Eight. I mean, think about how tremendous that is as far as a team. And this is their second year. You would think there would have been a little bit, um, they wouldn't be as hungry, so to speak, after winning the national championship and you're doing the media rounds. But this team is unstoppable. Do they have any weaknesses, though, that you see? Not that I can see. I mean, that yeah, getting back to that 30-0 run, that was the, the, the second greatest run in, in NCAA tournament history. Um, wow. But they uh, they are showing no flaws at this point. Yeah. Yeah, they're, you're, I have to agree with that. I mean, their coach is great. And um, uh, Coach Hurley, we'll, we'll see how, how it plays out. But there are going to be a tough out. But you never know. In this tournament, and that's one thing we have learned. So in the first game, it's 6:09. You have uh, NC State versus uh, NC State versus um, uh, I'm sorry, versus Purdue. And then following that, then at 8:49. So well, that's what they're scheduled to tip off. You're looking at Alabama versus UConn. Well, um, it's going to be just an action-packed Saturday. But we want to give the audience what they're really tuning into, and that is your picks, Richard. So we're going to tease it. Because coming up after the break, Richard, 60% right on his picks during this NCAA tournament, is going to give you his two picks for the semifinal round. And you will not believe what he's thinking for these games. So you've got to stick with us. We'll be right back after the break on Handicap Hustle. Ready to up your game and learn more about the thrilling world of sports betting? Introducing Double Down with Breslow, the ultimate podcast about the business of sports gambling. Join me, James Breslow, and a long list of expert guests as we dive into the art and science of the sports betting industry. Evolving regulations, technology enhancements, and the meteoric rise in the number of players makes this sector the fastest growing and most intriguing in the world. Unlock the business secrets from many of the industry's most recognizable C-suite executives, including famous odds makers and influencers every episode of double down with breslow is packed with insider tips deeply skilled analysis and in-depth discussions don't miss out on the ultimate resource for mastering the business of sports betting listen to double down with breslow on the evergreen podcast network or wherever you listen to podcasts that's double down with breslow the business of sports betting podcast Welcome back to Handicap Hustle. Well, I'm in New York, and I am obviously joined with by Richard Frazier, celebrity sports gambling handicapper out in Las Vegas, Nevada. We always have to get the best people. If you want to talk about sports gambling, you got to go to Las Vegas. I mean, if you want to talk about finance, you go to Wall Street. Politics, you go to Washington. Sports gambling, Las Vegas. And nobody is better at his job or her job than Richard Frazier. And Richard, I got to say, you are just, you're, you're not going to, you're, you're hitting threes blindfolded. You're not even, you're not even shooting them. You're like, I don't even know what you're doing. You're like, just a vaulting them or something. And they're going in because 60% hits and it's documented very well for the gambling audience. They definitely would have made some money had they chosen your picks that you've had in these first two weeks of the tournament. So let's start talking about final four matchups. Let's get with the, I have to talk about the first one. Let's go with the six o'clock game, which is NC State versus Purdue. What are you thinking? What are you picking? Well, uh, remember these times, your quote, now those are your times. Now me being a West Coaster, you know, we back those up three hours, but uh Correct, and I do apologize for that. that these are East Coast times. You're absolutely correct That's on that. That's okay, and I also wanted to make sure that you want to continue to talk about the men's tournament as opposed to the women's tournament, which may be more interesting than the men's tournament. I got to tell you, you are just, you are really getting me on, on really, I mean, I got, we're going to have cancel culture going on here. <laughs> I mean, I am just messing up. I got, I'm East Coast versus West Coast. We have the gender issues. Oh my goodness. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm going to end up on MSNBC, which might be a good thing for Handicap Hustle, but that's another topic for another time. 
But with that game, the first game for the men's game in, on the Final Four, in the Final Four on Saturday, which is 6.09 Eastern time for a tip-off, what do you think? What, what should the audience pick when they start placing their bets? Well, if we're going to break down this, this NC State-Purdue game, and uh, I, I think that we, we have to look at the tournament as a whole. Um, the favorites have kind of had their way in the tournament, not only straight up, but against the spread, where the, uh, the, the favorites have covered uh, just about 60% of these games so far. Now, if you look at where we are with this NC State-Purdue game, you know, the, the, the line originators originally put out a number of 11 and a half on that game. Um, wow. every, every, 90% of the other books are just copycats. So uh, that, that nine and a half got, got knocked down to, to nine uh, very quickly. So um, that, that means that there's, there's been strong money coming in, at least early money on NC State. About 80% of the money so far has been on NC State plus the points. So um, when I look at that game, you know, being that the favorites have done so well in this tournament, I, I kind of have to agree, uh, you know, it being with a spread that large, it's, it's hard to say that NC state's going to pull the upset and win the game outright. And I am generally a contrarian. I don't necessarily like to be where that amount of money is when you're talking about 80% of the money. But like I said, that's early money. That may be sharp money. People that are betting early, there's going to be a lot more money bet after this show airs. So, um, but if I had to go one way or the other on that game, which I am, I'm going to say take NC State plus the points. Whoa, NC State plus the points. Truly remarkable, I got to say, because you're you're actually saying that the game is going to be relatively close. I mean, I know there's a wide margin on the points that are given, but still, you're still looking at possibly only being down single digits. And I got to say, that's danger territory because NC State seems to find a way to win when the games are that tight. So if that's the case, this is going to be really interesting to see how it plays out. But you're saying NC State with the points is your pick for that first game. Boy, I hope you are right, but I hope you're right all the way because I do want to see the Wolfpack on Championship Monday. Yeah, that's uh, that's my decision on that game. Okay, uh, now we got to get to who would be the matchup then. Let's talk about the second game, UConn versus Alabama. Well, UConn, Alabama, we, we have a, a, a little bit of a reverse situation here where the line originators uh, put the, the number on this game with, with UConn being an 11 and a half point favorite. And the, the early betters jumped all over that because UConn has just been demolishing their opponents. And so everybody that bet early thinks that UConn is going to win this game by 15 or 20, like they've done the rest of their games. So that, that number is even bumped up to 12, 12 and a half. Some places wow. it may even go higher if the money continues to roll in on UConn. So uh, my analytics tell me that there's value in Alabama plus the points the chances of UConn steamrolling everybody and covering every game in the tournament are not likely. And again, I play the probability. So uh, this game here fits more into the palm of my hand than the NC State Purdue matchup. So I rate this play a little stronger, but I am also taking the dog in this game, Alabama plus the points. That is huge. Well, I got Mark Sears seems to find a way to win. I mean, bottom line, as a guard, he can shoot. He is a great shooter, tremendous. And then you have the inside play. So I have to say, I like this. Even if Alabama loses, I don't see it being a blowout. I mean, you don't go to the final four and get steamrolled. Now, granted, conventional wisdom would think, yeah, yeah, UConn's got this. They're going to win the game by 40. I mean, it just 
doesn't work that way. They're still college kids and they're young. So I like both of these picks. So let's recap. NC State with the points. Alabama with the points. This is going to be tremendous. What a weekend because I know, you know, Richard Richard has phrasewins.com, F-R-A-Z wins.com. And he is great at picking not just the college games, but also on the NBA side as well. Does tremendously well uh, on his pick. So I, I can't imagine what your winning percentage is there on the NBA side because you have more games to choose. But I, going forward, you have been spot on with this tournament. And this has been a real joy for me to really go go through. Do you want to make a, I'm just curious, one final championship pick who you think is going to win the whole thing? Well, you know, here's what I'm thinking, and this is what I might do. Obviously, uh, my my main play in this is 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 Alabama plus the points. My my second favorite play is is NC State versus the points. I I may go out and make a small wager on both of the favorites and these on the money line, and 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 try to catch these games in the middle somewhere. With that being said. If we have a Purdue-UConn final, I'm going with UConn. That's who my okay. pick is. Well, I'll do, I'll do the opposite then. If it is a Purdue-UConn final, I'm picking Purdue. Sticking with the Boilermakers. I had a cousin that went there. He played lacrosse. So I have to stick with the Boilermakers, and, uh, and I know I'll be hearing all about Purdue, um, obviously, on Saturday and Sunday if they do make it that far. So we'll see, see how that plays out. But the but I would love nothing more. And I think the country wants to see an Alabama NC State game. It definitely is gives brings back a lot of memories with NC State Houston in '83, and uh, it would be great to see. And uh, it would be just wonderful enter- entertainment, um, even for non college basketball fans to tune in and, and check this out. So it should be wonderful. Yeah. So Richard, let's do this again next week. We got to have a recap show. Because then I also want to start talking about the NBA. And then don't forget, Handicap Hustle is going to be wall-to-wall coverage with the Kentucky Derby. We have to talk about the Triple Crown, the Derby, the Preakness, the Belmont. We have to get into horses. That's down the line, though. That's later in April, and we'll start having those shows, and we'll bring those out. And then we're still uh, twisting Richard's arm to track NCAA lacrosse. But (laughs) maybe we'll have something for the tournament for that one in may so uh so we'll see richard any final words from you from the phrase wins.com ceo well i'm just looking forward to uh two competitive games which uh I'm, i i believe and hope that they will be and and not uh two blowout games but uh that. yeah that's that's what i'm looking forward to like I said, a lot of people may be disappointed if the underdogs don't win these games, but I do believe the underdogs will cover these games. But, you know, odds are that we're going to have a, a, a Purdue-Connecticut uh, final in this, this tournament. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm going to have to pull for Connecticut in that one. Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Well, next week's show, we'll recap the Final Four as well as the championship game. We'll talk about your picks. We'll look overall at your entire body of work for the three-week tournament. And then we'll start talking about pro sports right after that. And I know the audience will love to get information from you. So listen, everyone, go to phrasewins.com, F-R-A-Z, wins.com. We will have a link on in the description for this show as well we encourage everyone to go there and see richard's picks not just here on the ncaa tournament but also with pro sports pro basketball the nba i know he has a lot to offer there as well as some other gems that are that are uh, that he can uh, uncover for you so listen richard it's been great i can't wait for next week and we can't wait to see you either so on behalf of richard frazier i am todd schoenberger thank you once again for joining us on Handicap Hustle. We'll catch you next time, right after Championship Monday. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. I want you to smash that like button.